Hello everyone, myself Parishmita Sharma. Today I am going to start non-cooperation movement. So in the previous class, we have already discussed about the rise of Gandhi, Raulat Act of 1919, Satyagraha or non-violence movement of 1919, the Zaliana Wala Bagh massacre of 1919 and the Khilafat movement. So if you have any doubt then you can ask. Okay. Now let's start non-cooperation movement. The non-cooperation movement was a major event in the Indian struggle for independence. The movement started in 1920 and lasted through 1922. Through non-violence Mahatma Gandhi decided to non-cooperate with the British government. Here, the activists refused to buy British goods and use only local handicrafts and picketed liquor shops. So here, many factors or causes culminated over time which leading to the non-cooperation movement. So some of the significant causes were the discontent over the World War I, especially because of economic losses. Secondly, the Rowlatt Act. Point number third. The Zalian Wala Bagh Massacre of 1919. The economic exploitation of India by the British. And the Indian Muslims had launched the Khilafat movement to ensure protection of the Ottoman Empire. To provide equitable justice to Indians, Gandhi and national leaders decided to launch the non-cooperation movement. So, let's take a look on the programs. Under Mahatma Gandhi's leadership and with the weapon of non-violence, activists refused to buy British goods used only local handicrafts and picketed liquor shops. There was huge bonfire of foreign clothes in different places. Many students left government schools and colleges. The peasants of Midnapur refused to pay taxes. National educational institutions like the Kashi Bidapit, Banaras Bidapit, the National Muslim University of Aligarh, etc. were set up. Businessmen like Seth Jamnalal Bazaz declared that he would give rupees 1 lakh a year for the maintenance of non-practicing lawyers. Again, 20,000 sarkas were manufactured. I repeat, 20,000 sarkas were manufactured. So, the meaning of sarkha is spinning wheel. Okay, the meaning of sarkha is spinning wheel. The people, the common Indian people started to solve their disputes through panchayats. The movement was funded by the Tilak Swaraja Fund. The Indian women too actively took part in the movement. The visit of the Prince of Wales was boycotted. Mahatma Gandhi toured almost the whole country to encourage the people of India. The non-cooperation movement launched by Mahatma Gandhi had Two aspects. One, positive aspects and the other, 
is negative. The positive aspects include promotion of Swadeshi. Promotion of Swadeshi like Swadeshi movement. Non-cooperation movement also followed the policy of boycott foreign goods and start using homemade goods or homemade products made by the Indians. Particularly the revival of hand spinning and weaving. Remember particularly the revival of hand spinning and weaving. Second point, the removal of untouchability among the Hindus. Mahatma Gandhi tried to remove social discrimination from Indian society through this movement. Next point, promotion of Hindu-Muslim unity. So, during this movement, Hindu and Muslims of India came together on the national front because they jointly stand against the British government. Then fourth point, prohibition of the use of alcoholic drinks and the collection of a crore of rupees for the memorial of Tilak. On the negative side or negative aspects include the triple boycott, namely boycott of legislatures, courts and educational institutions like schools and colleges which were maintained by the British government. But in the negative program necessitated or the negative program needed some positive steps. For example, setting up panchayats to solve local disputes instead of the courts and set up of national schools and colleges where students leaving government schools and colleges might continue their education. It was made clear that ahimsa or non-violence was to be strictly observed by the non-cooperators and they were not to give up such a truth under any circumstances. So, the movement launched by Mahatma Gandhi was sanctioned by the Nagpur session of Congress in December 1920. It declared that the main object of the Indian National Congress is the attainment of Swaraj by the people of India by all legitimate and peaceful means. And now, for the first time, Indian National Congress decided to follow a policy of direct action. The Congress became a mass-based organization. Now came to the end of non-cooperation movement in 1922. So I have already told that non-cooperation movement was launched by Mahatma Gandhi in 1920 and it lasted for two years up to 1922. So Mahatma Gandhi told the people of India to follow the path of non-violence. But people at certain places did not remain peaceful. On February 5, 1922, there was a serious violence occurred at Sorisora in Gorakhpur district of United Province of British India. Here, the local police attacked the protesters and then 
they violently sorry violently collided with the police three protesters were keen in police firing so the protesters burned down the police station and about 22 police men were killed gandhi was very much shocked at this incident and felt that without adequate discipline without adequate discipline and patience on the part of the indian people the movement had proven or the movement had proved to be a great mistake or himalayan blunder great mistake or himalayan blunder so he suspended the movement and set on fast for 3 weeks but he was arrested on 10th march 1922 and sentenced to 6 years imprisonment for the allegation that he he himself instigated people for violence still can they remain firm on his principle of non violence or satyagraha and his imprisonment again led to another movement in india by his followers so accordingly on february 12 1922 the non cooperation movement came to an end now see simon commission simon commission was a group of seven british members of parliament under the chairman chief of char john simon the commission arrived in british india in 1928 to study constitutional reform in britain's largest and the most important position i repeat the commission arrived in british india in 1928 to study constitutional reform in britain's largest and the most important position meaning india at the time of introducing the montego samsford reform in 1919 the british government declared that a commission the british government declared that a commission would be sent to india after 10 years to examine the effects of the constitutional reforms and to suggest more reforms for india accordingly in 1928 a commission of seven members under the leadership of sir john simon reached india but the commission was boycotted by the congress because it did not have a single indian member the commission was boycotted by the congress because it did not have a single indian member it was opposed by nehru gandhi jinnah meaning both the muslim league and indian national congress on 13 october 1920 on 30 october 1928 the commission arrived in lahore where protesters greeted the commission with black flags in lahore the protest was led by the indian nationalist leader lala lajpat rai slogans of go back simon ran the air in order to make way for the commission the police began lati charge lala lajpat rai was critically injured and subsequently he died after that in 1929 the lahore session of the congress 
under the presidency of Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru declared complete independence as the chief goal of the Indians. Consequently, January 26, 1930 was celebrated as Independence Day throughout the country. Now see the point number 2.09 Civil Disobedience Movement of 1930 to 1934. Civil Disobedience Movement was a peaceful political protest launched by Mahatma Gandhi, Mohandas Karamsan Gandhi. And it was the active refusal of a citizen to obey certain laws, demands, orders, or commands of a government. One of the factors leading to the civil disobedience movement was the formation of the Simon Commission by the British government. It included only the British Parliament members so, this commission was accused of being an all-white commission, all-white commission, because there was no single Indian member. So, both the Muslim League and Indian National Congress opposed or stand against this commission. Meanwhile, Motilal Nehru shouldered the responsibility of the drafting committee and prepared the constitution for India. So he got the opportunity to draft or design or to prepare the draft constitution. Sorry, to prepare the draft constitution. Indian National Congress now accepted the Nehru report and pressurized the government to accept it. The Calcutta session of Indian National Congress held in 1928 warned the British government that they would start a civil disobedience movement if India was not granted the dominion status. The meaning of dominion status is a autonomous rule under the British government. So in 1929 at Lahore Congress it was decided that the chief goal of the Congress was to attain Purna Saras or complete independence for India. And on 26 January 1930, Purna Swaras Day was celebrated in India. And on 31st January 1930, Mahatma Gandhi gave an ultimatum or warned the Viceroy Lord Arwin to remove the evils of the British rule or injustice of the British rule with a list of demands. So now take a look on the demands. Prohibition of use of intoxicants. Next. Change of the ratio of rupee and sterling. Reduction of the rate of land revenue. Abolition of salt tax. Reduction of military expenditure. Reduction of expenditure on civil administration. Imposition of custom duty on foreign clothes. Acceptance of the Postal Reservation Bill. Abolition of the Crime Investigation Department. Release of all political prisoners. 
and issuing license of arms to citizens for self-protection subject to popular control. Mahatma Gandhi clearly mentioned that if those 11 points were ignored by the British government, then the nation would be going to launch the civil disobedience movement under the banner of INC or Indian National Congress. The civil disobedience movement started in 1930 with the famous Salt Satyagraha of Gandhi. Here, Mahatma Gandhi break the salt law of the British government. And this salt satraga or civil disobedience movement was also known as Dandi March that was launched on 12 March 1930. On that day, Mahatma Gandhi with some, his, some of his followers left the Sabarmati Ashram at Ahmedabad and made their way to Dandi, a village on the west coast of India. And the distance between the Sabarmati Ashram and Dandi is 385 km and they reached Dandi on 6 April 1930. Here Gandhi protested against the salt law of British government by making salt himself and throwing up silence to the British government. So this movement spread and salt law were silenced in other parts of the country. In the northwestern frontier province, the movement was led by the Servants of God or Kudai Khidmatgars, popularly known as the Red Sarts, under the leadership of Khan Abdul Ghaffar Khan. Here, in this movement, also Gandhi and thousands of his followers and the freedom lovers or the uh, freedom lovers and the strugglers were arrested by the British government or British police and the first roundtable conference in London was boycotted by Congress as the civil disobedience movement was going on. So that's all for the today's class and in the next class we'll start Gandhi Arwin Pact of 1931. Goodbye.